I've come to deepest, darkest Surrey today, about an hour from my house, to see one of Britain's mammals that I have never seen before and I've always wanted to. And it has recently shown up in Ireland as well, where it's a non-native species. So very excited to see it. Fingers crossed we do. I'm with some experts and there's every chance. Wish us luck. Good. I'm talking, of course, about our common or hazel dormouse. And this is a dormouse box, unusually, unlike a bird box. The entrance hole is on the tree side of a box. And we're just checking them for dormice. So just tell us a little bit Nida, about um, hazel dormice, their status in Britain. How so, are they doing? Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, they're not doing particularly well. So hazel dormice are found throughout England and Wales, but predominantly in the south. Um, we've lost them from a much of their range over the past hundred or so years because um, of diff changes, loss of woodland, loss of hedgerows and also a change in the management or lack of management as it were in many of our woodlands and hedgerows. Yeah so Dave tell us about the work that Surrey Dormouse Group and other Dormouse Groups are doing up and down the country. We have um, sites as much as we can over the, over the county depending on the resources we have and landowners permission and things like that and finding the signs for Dormouse which is not very easy don't leave many signs around. Yeah. We can't follow the drop-ins or tracks or trails and things. Mm to see them or we find the dormouse nuts the nibble nuts which is very useful yeah so we're putting the boxes up where we can we think they're dormice and the idea of that is to give them nesting opportunity mm -hmm. hopefully to build up their numbers to help the conservation of the species that's the aim of it all all the data is collected by all the dormouse groups all over the country who do the monitoring all the data is collected weights and sizes and sexes and things to, to the uh, national database, which is run by the PTS. So, if we plug up the hole at the back, undo the little latch, and then slide it over slowly to peer in. Nothing in this one. Yeah. Oh, look, hang on. Look at that. Is this right in the hole? Yeah. 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 This one tried to escape. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're gorgeous, aren't they? We don't need. Oh, okay, well done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well done. Double lines. What did we? I've got fur clip on that one. Did you yeah. say? Did I yeah. Much of it? Yeah. Two on the left, I think. Okay. Structure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the green leaves on the outer side. There's also quite a bit of moss, which isn't particularly usual, but I'm guessing they could have been a bit off the list. But yeah, do you can feel it? Uh, yeah, I see nipples. I think I can see nipples. And she's got a very clear clip on the back. I see the photo of Steve. Is it that one? It kind of looks like a diamond mm. in the middle of the left flank. A triangle, not diamond. I'm going to come out some more. Tell you what, Sean. Mm -hmm. Let's watch it. Oh, it looks like whitehead. He's over in the corner it's, there. It's lovely. Yeah. Hide in. I love it. Closed it, it's got his eyes covered. So I can tell. Yeah, doing the ostrich impression. Not in here. He's just got his head buried in the back. I'm going to come out some more. I'm going to come out some more. Take this yeah. out as well. It's the wrong colour for a dormouse, so you can. Yeah. They pull a plug in, of leaves and things in to actually block the whole Do they? Part. Yeah. Amazing. What have we found today, Nina? 
Uh, well, excitingly, we found four dwarf mice, uh, two pairs actually. So we've checked about 60, 65 boxes. And in two of the boxes, we found a male and a female each. And we think the females might be pregnant. Okay, so good news for dormice good right news. here yes. at this stage. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about their ecology and their biology. Yeah, well, um, one of the reasons it's really difficult to see hazel dormice is because they're nocturnal. They only yeah. come out at night and they're predominantly arboreal. So it means that they tend not to come to the ground. They like living in the trees, in the hedgerows, in the shrub, albeit they do come down to the ground in wintertime and they hibernate just on the forest floor. Yeah, and where you were talking about them hibernating earlier, Dave, where are they hibernating typically? Anywhere on the floor where there's um, a slight depression. The idea of them being on the floor, the temperature is more constant. Above ground, it fluctuates and they wake up too much. Yeah. But with radio tracking, uh, it's been found they can be almost anywhere. Base of a tree, tree roots in ground ivy, all sorts of places, just yeah. um, leaves. Some interesting hard. studies coming out. And what about the studies on their diet? You were saying that they're doing some dietary analysis yeah, as well. Yeah, dietary analysis of all yeah. sorts of fruits. and. Things. They can't digest um, cellulose. So they, they have a slightly different diet to other small mammals. Okay. Um, but having said that, they do feed on a range of things. And we're actually finding that insects are more prominent in their diet than we thought they were. Yeah. Um, and they are relatively adaptable, which is good news. But they do depend on mm. seasonality. So when the, the fruit comes in. from when they wake yeah. up, they need yeah. flowers. Insects through to the nuts at the end, which puts yeah. them the weight they can't, for hibernation. Can't just rely on hazel hazelnuts. No. <laughs> good stuff well thanks no, for bringing have, me out today we have dormice where there's very little hazel around as well yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. great well thank you for bringing me out today my first dormice i had exciting. great time <laughs> thanks luck. Yeah. <laughs> cheers